Happy New Year and welcome to our first episode with the Nairobi Hospital. Today we'll be discussing about cancer of the cervix. And taking us through is Dr. Paul Koigi, consultant OBSGYN at the Nairobi Hospital. Karibu sana, Daktari. Asante sana. So today we're looking about at, uh, cancer of the cervix. Yes. We've talked about prevention, we've talked about the treatment, and we've talked about the cost. Mm -hmm. Today I'd like us to talk about prevention, which is key in avoiding the the whole procedure of treating the the disease very true what what are some of the things or what what are some of the things that one should consider when when it comes to taking care of yourself to prevent cancer of the cervix okay so um, to begin with cancer of the cervix is actually one of the leading killers uh, in relation to cancers among women mm -hmm. both in kenya and in east africa and the sad truth is that in Kenya, we have an average of nine women a day dying of a cancer which is actually completely preventable. And this is literally a disaster because if we had the opportunity to save these women's lives, then we improve the quality of life for so many families, for those patients themselves, and uh, we increase our productivity as a nation because we're also trying to grow and uh, we, we want as many people to have as high a quality of life as possible. So our focus on prevention of cancer of the, the cervix, uh, by and large, uh, involves three key areas. Number one is lifestyle modification, so that you can reduce your risk. So for people who have high risk taking behaviors, we modify their behaviors. Mm -hmm. Uh, secondly, is for those who are known to be at risk, the, that is for every woman who is sexually active, they actually qualify to go for the opportunity for screening. So by having regular visits to the gynecologist, there are plenty of opportunities to screen for cancer of the cervix, and there are various methods of screening available. Uh, there is use of uh, the human papilloma virus testing, there is uh, directly examining the cervix, with uh, through visual inspection with acetic acid, uh, visual inspection with lugol's iodine, uh, the use of colposcopy, and the use of the, the famous pap smear that is done. Uh, ideally should be done annually uh, when a woman goes to the hospital for review. And uh, the newest kid on the block is uh, the new human papilloma virus vaccination that has recently come out. Uh, with the introduction of this vaccine, Kenya now becomes the 10th country in Africa and uh, the 155th country globally, which is very sad. We should have taken this up a lot earlier. And uh, we now join the ranks of those who are offering this vaccine. So this vaccine is a very interesting uh, new kid on the block because it's a vaccine against the two most common types of the human papilloma virus that are responsible for causing cancer of the cervix and that is type 16 and type 18 and those two types alone are actually thought to cause up to 70 percent of cancer of the cervix and it's actually thought that by uh, by offering patients this vaccine uh, preferably before they become sexually active then it should be possible to reduce the long-term burden of cancer of the cervix by over 80%. Mm. Mm. On, you have touched on uh, one of the treatment being, a, or rather prevention, mm. is the HPV vaccine, which was yes. launched in Kenya last year in October, yes. and I was privileged to attend the function. Excellent. And afterwards, mm. what came out is the doubts and the myths surrounding the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Could you demystify some of those myths? So that to encourage people who have, because it was targeting children of the age, under the age of 10, yes. before they get to their sexual debut. Yes. Yes. So uh, one of the things that sparked a lot of controversy mm -hmm. with uh, this cancer of the, vaccine, of the cervix vaccine, mm -hmm. uh, as you rightly mentioned, is that they are targeting girls aged 10. And uh, by targeting that, it's actually been informed by a statistic that says that by the time a girl is reaching 12, 13, a good number of them have actually started being sexually active, which is actually a very shocking statistic. But uh, the idea of targeting them before they become sexually active 
means that you're giving them a line of defense against a potential killer before they get exposed to it. And uh, you find that every time a, a vaccine is developed, it's actually been a very common thing that uh, just like when vaccines for polio, smallpox and so many other vaccines which have now joined our national program of immunization, uh, a lot of them faced similar resistance because uh, there are those who sit back and say that there are chemicals inside uh, these vaccines which will adversely affect people and uh, people could react to them adversely and uh, they could do things like hinder fertility or have an acute reaction to them. But by and large, the technology that has been used to develop these vaccines means that you're giving this vaccine in what you call a medium, uh, what you used to deliver. The medium is what you used to deliver the vaccine. And the media for delivery of these vaccines have been shown so far to be safe. And uh, for among the countries that have been uh, using these vaccines for a long time, uh, they have not shown these side effects that are currently being uh, propagated as myths. Mm -hmm. So the vaccine so far has proven to be safe. It's been shown in very many other societies to be effective. And if an intervention has been shown to be safe, it's effective, it's reducing disease burden, and it is reducing opportunities uh, for a life-threatening disease to develop, mm -hmm. then it even becomes unethical to deny our women the opportunity to be protected from something that could kill them. Okay. Yes. What is Nairobi Hospital doing mm. to address matters cervical cancer? We are, from the January 19th, we commemorate the world, or rather, is it, is it a week of cancer? The cancer cervical, Awareness Week. The Cancer Awareness Week, the Cervical Cancer Awareness Week. Yes. And I know it comes with screenings mm -hmm. and all those services that come to together to prevent the disease. What is Nairobi Hospital doing on it? Mm. So, uh, the Nairobi Hospital has uh, a team of dedicated consultants mm. uh, within our hospital, and uh, within uh, that team, we run a dedicated clinic mm -hmm. and within that clinic we have consultants who uh, will offer screening uh, of cancer of the cervix. Mm -hmm. We have multiple methods of screening available and uh, for those who are found to have a problem that requires to be addressed, mm -hmm. there is direct connection mm -hmm. within the unit so that uh, you can access specialists and uh, we have a very high-end cancer center within the hospital that actually directly deals with all these issues. Mm -hmm. Over and above that, this vaccine uh, for cancer of the cervix is actually available within the hospital. So uh, anybody who is willing to come and have it mm -hmm. is actually welcome to do so. Mm -hmm. So early diagnosis still remains the number one prevention of cancer, uh, cancer of the cervix? To date, yes. Mm -hmm. But now we are, we are looking to uh, have the vaccine take over as the number one spot because uh, if your first line of defense becomes overall prevention, then your second line of defense becomes early detection. Because if you can prevent it altogether, then you reduce those who are detected. And if you reduce those who are being detected, then you, redu you actually overall reduce the number of those who need treatment. treatment. Yes. Okay. I take home message yes. to our listeners. So I think for everyone who's listening, mm -hmm. uh, the parting shots would be two. Number one, cancer of the cervix is preventable. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we take the opportunity for prevention, then we have the chance to reduce the disease burden by up to 80%. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, for those who have already been exposed mm -hmm. to the human papilloma virus, there is an equally great opportunity for early detection. Mm -hmm. And if we can improve what we call our health-seeking behavior, that means going for regular checkups in a dedicated way, mm -hmm. then we can eliminate death from mm -hmm. cancer of the cervix. Mm -hmm. Asante sana, Daktari. Karibu sana. Mm. To Daktari, thank you very much for your expert opinion. And to our Karibu. listeners, please do take this opportunity to find out the status or the state of your cervix. I've been your host, Modoni Waweru. Till next time when you're discussing about childhood cancer. Thank you.